Right, everybody, hopefully um, you can hear me. Um, I'm just trying to sort out so I can see on my phone and see, see the live chat. Um, if I can, I think it might come up a little bit, uh, hopefully come up in a bit. It's a bit of a funny one because it's... Um, I might have to get the link. So give me a just give me a shout out if you can hear me and you can see my hand and everything. Just say hi and, and wave from and whatever. And I'm just going to um, uh, you can hear me. Oh, fantastic! That's brilliant. Right, I'm just going to see if I can copy this link so I can see all of your um, comments on here. Just bear with just a second. So I'm going to copy that. Um, and uh, gosh, it's so complicated sometimes. Right, let me just see if I can copy the link into here. A uh, bit of paste. Go. Open. Oh, I can see it. Hurrah! Right, I'm just going to turn my uh, sound down, and I'm going to put that on there so I can see what everybody's saying. Hurrah! So hello everybody. Um, I just, just sort these out here and I'll bring that into there as well so I can sort of see that. There. Um, excellent. Thank you all so much for just sort out my wiring here as well. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for joining me. Um, so we are going to have a really fabulous afternoon. Right, I'm just going to grab my glasses and my uh my visor <laughs> um and yeah and we're gonna make a we're gonna make a start so i'm really really glad that you're all here i can see the live chat which is fantastic um i, I will keep coming back to it and having a look so if anybody's got any um questions you know do, do pop your questions in there and i will try and answer them now we've got two hours we can do a huge amount in two hours we can do so much in two hours, honestly. Um, you are going to be flying by the seat of your pants. Uh, you will not know what's hit you. <laughs> you won't have time to be worried or scared or anything, okay? So we're just gonna be whipping through um, and um, we're just gonna have a really, really great time. So the best thing to do when we're about to start a drawing is to um, know that it's going to be amazing so whatever outcome it is however it turns out the process is fantastic the fact that we're sitting here with at the moment we've got 282 people on uh, with us which is just brilliant you're drawing with people all over the world it's fantastic the vibe is brilliant um we're just going to have a, a huge amount of fun honestly it's going to be brilliant so we are going to get started i've got my water here all ready if i need it uh, I've got all of my pencils out ready um, and uh, we're, we're going to make a start. Okay, so the little lamb, uh, what we're going to do is I've, I've chosen the, the darker toned paper just because we can get the light colours in quite quickly. And what we're going to do uh, to begin with is we're actually going to kind of bring colour in over the entire area. It just makes it a little bit quicker to see sort of where we're going. Uh, so I'm going to start with my Pablo uh, Ash Grey. Um, you can't hear anybody, you can't hear anything you speaking. Uh, I can see in here. Uh, I think, Bryony, just check that you've got, let me just check that I can hear me. Quicker yes. to see sort of where... No, it's definitely, the, de the sound is definitely wor uh, working. Um, Bryony, just check that you've got your, um, just check that you've got your uh, sound up. Um, so the problem with live streams is that w depending on internet connection, all of that type of stuff, it can change and it can, you can buffer and everything like that. Sadly, there isn't a huge amount I can do about that. So I am, uh, no, Melissa, I'm not doing, not doing any backgrounds. We're doing a little bit of um, grass, but we're just going to make a start. So I've got my ash grey here. Um, it's sort of like a, it's a little bit like the Polychromos Warm Grey 2. 
it's sort of like a yellowy grey, I would guess. But the Pablos are really, really great on um, the pastel mat or, you know, anything like that because they're quite a velvety pencil. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start to bring in some, um, some colour straight away and we're just going to get going. Now, I would usually use uh, glassine under my hand at all times, but because this is sort of like a live draw, I don't want to kind of cover everything up. Um, so we're just going to we're just going to go for it. Um, I'm going to start on her little bottom here. Um, I'm going to have light pressure so think about your light pressure thinking about your hand you don't want to be squashing your skin down just nice light pressure and we're going to be going in like woolly pencil strokes so think um, wool think that the lamb's wool and think that's how we're going to be actually putting the pencil down um, and we're just going to go for it so we're, we're going speedy <laughs> We're going to be we're going to be going speedy. So, you know, just go for it. Honestly, I know you can keep up. Don't start thinking about perfectionism or anything like that. We don't want anything that's perfect here. We want it all haphazard and, and, and bonkers. Um, you know, you don't need to worry about anything like that. The other thing as well is depending on what paper you're working on. Um, if you're working on the pastel mat, don't worry if it's looking a little bit uh, grainy. Doesn't matter really really doesn't matter we can um, use the same pressure all over then we've got some little highlighty bits we can just go in and kind of add a little bit more pressure so you get a little bit of a lighter and I'm just going to bring a little bit of this in and then we're going to bring some darker in quite quickly to get the um, uh, uh, shadows and everything like that in as well so we don't lose our outline um, so I'm just going to come up onto the back here we're just going to come in We've got that little outline uh, of her uh, bottom there. And basically what I want to do is I just want to start, I just want to start by putting pencil on the paper because that is the hardest thing when we're drawing. It's the hardest thing to start. It's like, where do I start? What do I do? What do I, you know, um, do I start here? Do I start there? Do I put the eye in? the best thing to do is just put pencil on paper and just make a start. And then when you've made a start, then it's like, oh, Okay, I've made a start now, it's fine. Um, so, um, you know, and then it's not so bad. Okay, so we've made we've made a bit of a start here. So now what I want to do is I want to bring in my warm grey four. So this is the Polychromos warm grey four here. It's like a mid grey, um, you know, it's it's more sort of yellow based than, than blue based. Um, and what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to start to bring in some of these darker elements. So I'm just going to bring a little bit around her bottom here. And you'll find this really, really lovely technique of using the dark over the top of light. So where you've put your light colours, um, you can bring the dark in over the top and it just sort of gently smooths them out a little bit. If you've seen my Westie that I've just done over this last week, I used that um, technique extensively on there. Uh, you know, the dark grey in over the top of the white to, and it really works really, really well. So I'm just coming down the edge of the leg here, literally just whacking in a bit of, bit of shadow in there. We don't need to worry about details or anything like that just yet. We're just going get to get all of these nice shadowy bits in. So I think I'm going to kind of work in conjunction with the ash grey and the warm grey four so that we can kind of get an idea of everything that's going on in there. Um, okay, so back to the ash grey. So the other thing that I'm not doing and probably won't do a huge amount to begin with is um, any sharpening of pencils. Um, I do sharpen my pencils when, when I need to. On the pastel mat, if you continually sharpen your pencil, pencils, you end up with um, really stubby pencils. So I tend to, um, you know, when I'm doing this kind of thing, not not sharpen them very re very regularly but the sharpener that i use is the swordfish multi-point that's the one that i use on a regular basis and then i have a little i don't know where it is the little cum eraser as well a little tiny handheld one which is brilliant for the um the fatter softer pencils like the drawings um but the multi-point's brilliant it's an electric um sharpener and you literally just sh shove your pencil in hold it for a couple of seconds and it's sharp it's really good for a lazy artist it's brilliant and, and I am a lazy artist. Um, it's, it's really, really good. So just round and round and round. 
uh, will vary based on taper. So um, yeah, so depending on what sort of paper you're using, to be honest, this is still going to be your, your technique on here. You know, we're still gonna bring all of that texture and everything in first and then bring the details in on the top. And you can do that with all, all types of paper. Um, you know, with the white paper, what you'll find tricky is that it's going to look really pale to begin with and you might not see as much of this but you know once we start to add some more of the variations of value and everything then it will start to come um you know together on that white paper so i'm just going to come down into this little leg down here so just again it's quite fluffy we can bring these little bits of um see here where we've got these little little sort of ridges of texture so all I'm doing is just kind of putting my pencil on the paper and just kind of putting these little jagged marks in um, and then I can kind of come over them a little bit so we get we get the feeling of the texture in the wool again just in there so it all can look at this is what we call the ugly stage when we're when we're starting it and we're our brain is is kind of running that you know in a commentary going what are you doing <laughs> what on earth were you thinking um this is looking absolutely terrible and then you've got sort of like your um the 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 sort of like the the inner voice that that is trying to stay more positive you know kind of can you know counterbalance that by going no no it's fine it, it's going to work out it's fine it's fine and you've got to um you've got to go with the with the voice that says it's going to be fine um it's uh it's a it's a funny old thing <laughs> our inner critic um are you thinking texture so i'm um yeah so i'm bringing this is what i'm bringing in i'm bring, just bringing texture and everything in at the minute so i'm just going to scribble up on here um up on the back as well and these these initial layers they are speedy they are fast um you know yes we could spend a huge amount of time on this little lamb um but we don't have a huge amount of time we've only got a couple of hours um you know so we and using this sort of more quick sketchy approach it's really really nice sometimes you know if you're kind of used to doing realism and all of that type of stuff and then just having a bit of a break and doing something quite sort of speedy and um and sketchy is lovely and to be honest all of my um realistic portraits their underlayers are kind of done in this way uh you know anybody who who is already a member um you know of, of the academy or patreon or you know has seen me teach before that you'll know that i go like the clappers <laughs> um but actually it, it's good because it, it allows you well it doesn't allow you to get scared or think you can't think when you're going this quick you just got to go for it so um we're just going round and round and round <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a boring color this one because it's all sort of white um but it um you know and this kind of thing is really mindful as well it's a really mindful exercise just getting color on the paper so we're going to come down to this little bit here. I'm going to bring a little bit into the tummy. Not not too much. I want to sort of make sure that we've got those values and everything in there. And I'm going to come back now to my um, warm grey four. And we're going to start to bring a little bit of the, um, the value into here. So it's almost like it's taking it back to the paper. Um, one of the things that you could do if you wanted is use like a kneadable eraser. And you could kind of use the kneadable eraser to I'll show you. We won't, we won't actually do this, but this is something that you could do. You can use your kneadable eraser to kind of take out some of the white or some of the lighter colours to give you the values in there so that you, you know, you're basically not putting pencil down. You're using the subtraction technique to actually give you the darker values, which is quite a nice thing to do as well. But we won't do that. Um, so in with the warm grey four. And I'm just going to come in on the side of the leg here. We've got a, quite a dark area in here, which we're going to darken up significantly and a little dark area down on the side of the leg here. If you're finding, if you're sitting there going, oh, I can see my line and it's really bugging me, ignore it. Just ignore it. It will it will disappear. Um, you know, as we kind of go through the drawing, it will all start to disappear and it will be it'll work out absolutely fine. Um, so, you know, you don't need to worry about anything like that. Uh, right, so I'm going to bring a little bit of the grey in here. Uh, 
you'll be um, you'll be seasick by the end of this you'll have been going so fast <laughs> um, but I think as well you know this sort of drawing where you are going a little bit speedy is great because you just don't, you just don't have the time to be able to overthink anything um, you know it's uh, I, Laura you've just got to go for it <laughs> you've just got to you've just got to take a deep breath and shut your eyes and and go for it don't worry though because it's it's um you know you can go back to the beginning if you want and um you know you can you can sort of but uh, I don't know if you can watch from the beginning now or rewind it now but um it's all being recorded so you'll be able to watch it watch it back um Okay, so we've, we're getting these nice little values in here. So I'm going to come down onto uh, the little leg here. So I've got my uh, ash grey again here. And I'm just going to come in again, this woolly, woolly pencil strokes. I always like to think about when I'm putting my pencil on the paper, um, you know, try and sort of match the fur quality with the pencil strokes that I'm putting down. So woolly fur, I'll be going round and round. Um, oh, sorry, this this one is this one is the ash grey. Now, if you were to use um, a polychromos, I would probably use something like a, a warm. If I show you, is the I probably use a warm grey one. So you can see there, I've got the ash grey Pablo. I've got the warm grey one, and then this is the warm grey two. So the warm grey one is probably the best um, match for that. The number for that is um, 270. Oh, Diane's <laughs> getting dizzy. <laughs> oh dear, I don't know. Um, so I'm just coming down the little leg here. And we've got this, she's got quite a, quite a big knee little baby animals have, have all got quite big knees haven't they they're born with sort of like their their normal joints and we've got so many sheep in the back of the in the field at the back of the house and i have to admit i was thinking mm, i don't think we're going to have any lambs this year um because none of them look like they're having lambs well the little lambs keep on they're all lambing outside this year they've they've done it a little bit later apparently and we have little lambs popping up all over the place. <laughs> so I was really worried yesterday and spoke to the farmer. And not that I'm a busybody or anything. Um, and I just said, oh, there's a little lamb in the field. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit worried about it. And they were like, yeah, we're lambing outside. You'll see, a, a, you know, an awful lot more coming through. So um, we're seeing lots and lots and lots of little lambs now. Um, just, you know, they're just popping up. <laughs> Look out the window. Oh, there's another one. Um, which is which is oh, I love having lambs next next to the um, next to the house. They're so 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 sweet. Um, but there's there's going to be loads. I mean, there's so many sheep in the field. <laughs> right. So we've got the little leg coming in through there. Um, and then let's come down onto the neck area down here as well. So I'm just going to bring it through here. So I'm, I, I must admit, white animals on the grey paper, on the dark grey, is not, it isn't one of my favourite things to do. It, it can look really, really good, but with a drawing like this, where it is a little bit speedy, um, it, it's, it's actually, I think, easier to do because you can really see your subject um, start to kind of appear before your eyes. Um, you know, whereas if we were doing this on the white, it would be a little bit more tricky and we'd have to sort of take a little bit more time. Um, but um, I mean, saying that, I think the Westie, I don't know how many hours she took me, not that, not that long, um, maybe about eight hours, something like that. Um, and I think if I'd done it on the white, it would have taken a lot longer, uh, purely because I would have been able to get or felt I would have been able to get more detail in there. So you can see on the neck here, we've got some sort of like little ridges. What I'm going to do is just bring a little bit extra pressure in so that it almost shows up a little bit lighter. Obviously going to come in with the values in there. And then down here as well, where we're coming into a little neck. So being, um, you know, I'm not being particularly careful about where my pencil strokes are going. We're just, we're just woolly. We've just got woolly. I'm going to be a little bit more careful when I come to her little head. Um, 
a little ear there and I will sharpen you can see how my pencil's gone right down if I've been sharpening this it would have been about this size now so you know that's why I don't really so I'm going to come down to a little head there and then we're just going to um, spring a little bit into here and then I'm going to sharpen up and we'll, we'll kind of work on the, the head in a second. Um, so now I'm going to go back in with my, in fact, I'm going to get my dark sepia. Okay, so this is one of my favourite pencils. If you look at the warm grey four that I've got here, this is the dark sepia. And it's very similar, looks very, very similar to black. This is, this is the black here. So you can see that it's a very dark pencil. Um, and I think this is one of the, my most used pencils. Um, oh, now then, let's just have a look here. Uh, you don't do your base lines for your entire piece for your... No, so Melissa, no, I don't tend to do that for... Well, it depends what I'm working on. But no, I prefer to work in sections. Of a piece like this, where it's quite quick actually getting a few layers in first and then going into the sections and working on the sections can work really nicely for a for a live draw like this rather than just concentrating on a tiny bit if i was going to do this as a 12 hour tutorial then i would most definitely start on a section so i would kind of start up on her little tail up here and work the tail in and then work all of the leg in and everything so it would start to appear gradually Whereas a, a speedy drawing, actually, it, I find it quicker to do it this way. It's not my favourite way of drawing, I have to say, um, but it works really, really well for something like this. So I'm going to go in with my dark sepia. I'm going to be really brave and get some of these really nice dark values into the edge of her leg here. So you can see on the um, photograph, we've got this really dark bit in here kind of comes down onto her tummy and then down this little bit down here as well so when you put this in yes it's going to look quite grainy but again don't worry about that it really really doesn't matter um, we can sort the graininess out afterwards we kind of come in a little bit over the top of the line there again it doesn't doesn't matter because it will sort itself out I think when you start a piece like well any piece is really easy to get into that sort of panic mode where you're like, oh, I've done my, I've done my line art too hard. I'm never going to be able to get it to, to disappear. But if you if you remember that with colour pencil, you're going to be putting quite a few layers on, um, you know. So actually, those initial layers are going to look a bit ropey. Um, you know, they just are. <laughs> you know, and you're going to be able to see your line art and everything through it. But it, it doesn't matter because they'll disappear once you start adding more layers in. Um, and I'm just going to bring this. Um, this little bit through here actually that's quite nice there because it shows the distinction between the tummy and the the back of that leg there so i'm just going to bring that bit of shadow in there as well with the dark sepia um now i've got just need to get this little leg here because i've i've kind of missed a once it comes down there this, this little darker bit here which is actually the other leg Okay, that's fine and then I'm just going to come into this bit here where we've got these little creases again we're just gently bringing the color in when we don't need to be being perfectly perfect and getting everything absolutely amazingly in the right places because you know this stage it's all about kind of getting shape and form and getting everything to kind of sit in the right place and then we can go back and start building um, you know all of the details and everything like that this this way of drawing as well I find quite liberating I find it quite quite nice being a little bit sort of loose and sketchy um, you know and then as you build the layers up you can just get tighter and tighter if you want to um, it also adds a little bit of movement into the pieces so they don't become like really static um, oh no yeah, no, that sounds awful. Dog rolling in stinky mud it sounds absolutely horrible. <laughs> I've banned my dogs from the studio this afternoon. Um, Vinny has his favourite beanbag in here and he would have just been rolling around on it and making so much noise. So they're watching football in the other room. <laughs> but um, I put Vinny in the garden last night before I went to bed 
and we've got oh, it sounds awful but we've got our old sofas still sitting in the garden my new sofas arrived last week and we need to still get a skip um so i've got my old sofas in the garden just sat there waiting to go on the skip and um Vinny just goes and sits in them and then he wouldn't come in <laughs> <laughs> and because of my knee I couldn't go and get him so I'm like midnight I'm shouting at him to get him to come in the house he's just sat on this sofa looking at me he's a very naughty boy right so you can see we've got some nice uh, value coming in through here which is great um, I'm going to bring a little bit of that dark sepia actually onto the tail area here and on the bottom just to kind of bring a little bit more of that dark in there um and then let's just bring a little bit into there as well. So we've got that little bit more dark in the legs there. Um, and then I'm just going to bring a little bit into the, the front of that leg there as well. The, the nice thing, if you're using pastel mat, the nice thing with pastel mat is that if you put a colour down and you think, ooh, shouldn't have used that, it, it doesn't matter. You can just um, you can just colour over the top of it. Uh, right, okay, so let's now start to just bring in a little bit of her head. Um, I'm going to use the dark sepia and I'm just going to bring her eye in. Now, um, I think we mustn't get hung up on, the, on this particular eye, okay. It's small. We can't see any detail and it's certainly not the focus so we don't need to be sitting there for three hours drawing an eye um we just need to kind of just go for it so i've got a little bit of um with my line drawing i've got a little bit of the her eyelashes showing which i'm going to kind of keep i can't really work out on my line drawing what's what to be honest but all i'm going to do is just going to kind of bring in that sort of a shape i know it's quite tiny um but I'm, I'm just being very sketchy, kind of bringing that little bit in there, that little bit in there. And that's going to be my eye. It's really not going to be anything more than that. Um, because there's no point us trying to, you know, get masses and masses of detail in. So it's just a sort of a shape, really. Um, and then what I can do is I can bring my cinnamon in. Oh, no, I'm not going to bring the cinnamon in. I'm going to bring the granite rose in. So any pink you've got. I'm just going to bring a little tiny bit of pink into the corner there. And then I'm just going to come over the top of that very gently with my dark um, sepia. Uh, just so we've got a little bit of pinkiness coming through, but not much. And that's the eye. That's that's all it is. I know it's tiny, but, you know, just don't try and make much of it. Um, I'm now going to... Da -da -da -da, I think I'm going to use my... Um, Polychromos Warm Grey 1. Okay. And um, I'm just going to start to kind of plot some of the, hair, the the fur and everything on her face. So, let's keep that there. Um, so, again, I'm going to go a little bit slower. But, again, we're just going to have nice, gentle pencil strokes. A little bit closer together than the wall because the, the, the hair on her face... And on her ears is um, not not as woolly, so it's got a slightly different texture. So I've kind of got my pencil on its side, so it's not up like that. It's on its side, and I'm just sort of bringing that um, closer texture in. So smaller pencil strokes. Um, and the thing with ears like this, where they're kind of pointing towards us, it's all in the shading. Uh, so you know it's the shape is very strange but if you can get the shading correct that's what's going to make the ear look like it's kind of folded over and pointing towards you um uh, j jc jc yes it's um it's all recorded um so let's just pull this down here and then i've got the this is sort of i'm going to go a little bit harder on the edge of the ear here just so it looks lighter I haven't got any white. I didn't. Sh I didn't put any white in this. It's all greys. So just a little bit more pressure will make it look that little bit brighter. And at the moment, it looks absolutely dreadful, but it will promise you it'll look okay. So I'm just going to bring a little bit more light on the top there. So a bit more pressure, closer pencil strokes. You can see it starts to kind of obliterate some of the grain that's coming through there. 
and then I'm just going to pull a little bit over here as well onto the where her head meets her neck I'm saying it's a her I, I have no idea so and then we're just going to come down onto the side of her little ear here as well now I'm bringing these light colors in um, and, and actually I'm going to once we've kind of established a couple of layers what I'll do is I'll bring a little bit of actual colour in over the top so we've got some nice colour going on. So nice gentle gentle small pencil strokes. This is warm grey one lin. Um, I'm just using the warm grey one on this. I'll probably bring some cold grey in there at some point and some pink but I'm just going to stick with the, um, the warm grey on this one. Um, again don't worry if you're thinking oh it's, I haven't got a nice sharp outline doesn't matter don't worry about it um, you know we once we start to get a little bit more in there and we start to get a little bit of the darker colors in there it will um, it'll start to smooth out so okay and then I'm just gonna bring a little bit more down onto her head so woolly 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 round pencil strokes You can use your paper as well for some of those the little tones so just go a little bit down here where it's a little bit darker and just go lighter so it looks like it's slightly darker and it it really really helps i think to kind of get those the values in quite really quickly because it um, it brings everything to life and it makes everything look a little bit 3d so being sort of quite um, dexterous with your pressure means that you can get lights and shades in by just using one pencil, which is great. Um, I'm going to come down the side of her eye here with not hard pressure, but I want to get sort of quite a light um, little bit of, of fur in there. And also just underneath her eye, oh, it's a tiny eye. There's no point at all trying to get any detail in there. I'll just bring a little bit of that in there as well. Um, oh, don't worry, Evelyn. You can, you can just sort of sit and... And watch us all flying through or <laughs> just uh, just jump in where we are um, okay so we're gonna come down and you can see as we're kind of building our head here as you're look kind of looking at the the, the photograph you, you'll start to kind of see colors popping out at you um, the more you see well the more you look the more you see basically um, and I'm seeing some yellows coming through here whether I put oh I've got green I've got cream in there um I've got to put yellow ochre in there but we've got cream in there which is fine um so we can kind of get some creamy color going on in there which I think would be quite nice and um, yellows and pinks work really really well together so um you know we can bring some of that in as well I'm just going to come around a little back of her throat here where it's a, again it's a little bit woolly this is much much darker we need to really bring some values in there but um we need these layers down first before we can start to kind of build on that and then when we come to this little bit here this is really sort of quite um the side of her face it becomes a completely different texture and we really do need to show this sort of like little um cheeky area here it's much smoother and the, the hair kind of comes down and around this area down here it's going to be much darker and you can see at the minute it's all sort of uh, it's starting to take shape but where we've got these lighter areas they kind of stand out and the darker areas push back so at the minute we've got this sort of like a lump on her face here which well, obviously we don't want that gray bit there doesn't help but um, that's another thing that we need to be really, really careful of is, you know, where we're going to pull things forward and push things back. You can see now I've moved that little grey bit there. Um, this bit here is kind of pushed back a little bit. So I'm just going to come down uh, face here. Again, it's sort of quite quick. But I'm now going to start going upwards, um, up and down with my pencil. Hi Christy, no, no, you're not, um, you're not too late. No, there's no pay rooms. You can just, um, you can just watch if you like, or you can jump in. Okay, so I'm just going up and down here. So this, the hair on her little nose here, 
is um, you know sort of quite uh, quite smooth quite short it's not woolly yes Glenda it's all being recorded don't worry I hope it's being recorded <laughs> I'll be sad if it's not <laughs> we'll have to do it again um, okay so I'm just coming down the little edge of her face now I've got my picture on the iPad but I, I've got the whole lamb in view so I'm not blowing it up yes I'm using pastel mats or I'm using the dark grey pastel mat um, I'm not blowing the picture on the iPad up I'm just kind of leaving it at, at this size um, you know because I don't want to kind of get all bogged down with detail and stuff like that I just want to you know enjoy the process of just scribbling and <laughs> whacking the colour in um, Okay, so we'll come down here to her little nose. We we'll probably need to bring a little bit of grass in here just to make some sense um, of everything. I'm going to use my um, the uh, permanent o permanent green olive. So it's number 167, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring a little tiny bit of grass in. I I'm not drawing grass. Um, I don't draw grass. <laughs> I really don't like drawing grass. Um, I think it's because it's green. It's very scary. So we're just going to kind of do a little bit of just upwards flicking of the pencil. Um, that's all we need to do. Um, just to give us a little bit of an idea of what this... Uh, let's get the grass in now and then we're not panicking about it later. <laughs> so I always, I always think, you know, get all of those awful bits in first and then it's not so scary. Um... So it's, um, I do that with my backgrounds as well. Get them all in, get them all, all the backgrounds in. And then if anything goes wrong, it's going to be a background. It's not going to be the actual animal. So, um, you know, might as well, might as well just get it in quick. And then at least we can sort of work a little bit into the, um, the lamb's face here as well. So I'll just get that little bit of grass in there. Um, I'm going to come back in again with the dark sepia. I'm just going to bring a little bit into her nose here. So we can't really see what's going on in there. It's a little nostril and everything is in there. Um, we can, this is what's really nice about when you've got a little bit of grass and everything, because, you know, if it all goes a little bit pear shaped, you can just cover it with grass. And nobody, nobody will know any different. <laughs> just put a load of grass all over and we'll just cover it in grass and that'll be it. Yep, it's a lamb hiding in long grass. So, uh, just bring a little bit of her nose in there which is cool okay right so what i want to do now is i just want to come in around her eye area here and just bring a little bit of not detail but value in um i'm going to use my warm gray four um i am going to sharpen it i'm going to sharpen my um, ash gray at the same time was really unsharp so that my swordfish works really really well um it's it's a really super pencil sharpener right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to bring a little bit of the warm gray four underneath her eye here so i've got a sharper pencil so i can kind of get in there over the top of the white a little bit harder when i come to the edge here so it goes a bit darker and then i'm just going to start to bring a little bit of the darker colour in on her forehead here because it's sort of rounded and there's a bit that sort of dips down. I am going to have to bring a bit of the dark sepia in because um, it needs to be sort of slightly darker. But we can have a little bit of a lost edge in here actually because it's um, sitting on top of the grey. Can you see how the grey then bleeds out to the grey? Um, I thought this started at 11, so UK is for, um, Marlene, it started at three o'clock, so we've been going for half an hour. Um, so I'm just bringing this down, down here. Again, just up and down for these pencil strokes. Can you see how the darker colour in over the top of the light really starts to smooth it so you can get some of those sort of smoother edges and she's sort of almost disappearing into the paper which i do quite like and then we can bring a little bit of this dark in here as well 
So when you're, when you're working with pastel matte, it, um, those darker colours in over the top of the lights really help to smooth out. Um, you know, and it, it sounds a little bit sort of counterintuitive, um, you know, that you're trying to make a light animal, but you're putting dark colours in on the top of it. But, um, you know, actually light coloured animals have a huge amount of value um, in there and, and a lot of them are much, much darker than you would sort of anticipate. So again, just coming down here. It's my son just setting off in his very loud and noisy car. Okay. So we're going to have to come in definitely with that dark sepia to get some of these really dark tones in there. And I'm just going to come up my little face there. Just bring a little bit more into there as well. I want to bring a little bit of the cream in there. Can you see how her face is starting to come to life now as well? And then um, I'm just going to come into the ear area here. So we're just going to add a little bit of dark in here. Going through onto there. A little bit more dark in there. And then we've got the dark underneath her ear as well. So just really working those those shadows in. And it's these these shadows and um, you know the darks and the lights that are going to make a real difference with your drawings. You have to get a little bit brave with um, the now then. What other colour did I use in there? I don't think they're okay. Where's that? Yeah, I've got some cold, cold greys in there actually that I'm going to bring uh, in a second. Um, yeah, you have to get a little bit brave with um, with values, but it's really, really worth the 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 scariness because it makes such a massive difference, um, you know, to your work when you bring these shadows and everything in. So you can see we're starting to get a little bit more definition in her face here. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the dark sepia in. I'm gonna sharpen that as well. And again, I'm just gonna come in on the top of her eye here, and just sort of add slightly darker. Being quite careful, I don't want to sort of, um, you know, make her look like she's got a black eye or anything. I might just have to go back into there and add a little bit more. That's not so bad actually. And then I'm just going to come, the dark sepia is a really dark colour. So if you use it really nice and lightly, you get sort of like a tint of it. I'm just going to come around there. And then this is quite dark in the corner here. I know you can't see it. <laughs> um, you just have to... Uh, I should have a, a an area that's like really blown up, shouldn't I? Um, okay, I think I need to make that a little bit wider. A little bit. And then... That's a bit better. Um, okay, and then let's just darken. in there again as well um and then again we're really concentrating on these values so it's there's no there's no details or anything like that just yet it's just all about the the darks and the lights so i'm just going to come across the little head here now what we need is here is we need a little bit of a curve to kind of show that the head is curved if you just go with a straight line it's kind of going to look a bit strange so you need to go with the, the sort of the curve of the skull here just adding those sort of slightly darker values and that's going to really really help the eye kind of understand that it's rounded and then there's this sort of dip that comes down and it comes down into the nose so you can it starts to add form uh, it's almost like sculpting on your on your page um you know you can start to really really see it sort of come to life and, and sticking out and although this will be a, a, a you know quite a painterly piece 
when we're done it's not going to be like super 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 detailed he's still going to look really you know really realistic because we're, we're concentrating a huge amount on those values um right so let's bring a little bit more of this up into here this is the dark sepia that i'm using it's, a, it's almost black so it is quite dark and then what i want to do is i want to bring some some of the creamy colors in as well A little bit more into there and along the edge here um, and then let's get some cream in there so I've got the um, the cream Pablo so it's like a like the ivory polychromos if you like um, if I was doing this you know kind of just drawing it and choosing the colors as I was going I would probably bring something like a yellow ochre in as well um, but I'm not going to do I'm going to use the cream and I'm just going to bring some of that in on the top here so it's a um, like a yellowy colour and I'm going to bring that in underneath the eye and then I'm going to bring what I'll do is I'll bring warm greys in to darken it up so again what happens is when you bring the lighter colour in over the top onto the dark pastel mat it starts to look really grainy again and that's when you you know you, your stomach goes and you're thinking oh god am i ever going to get rid of this grain and yeah you, you absolutely will it's just part of the process and it the grain of the pastel mat is wonderful because it allows you to add um so much detail it, it's it's super really really um you know fabulous surface you just got to kind of get over the fact that you know you, there's quite a lot of grain on there if you're using like a, a strathmore tone tan or something like that you won't have this issue um, you'll have a little bit of tooth in there but you won't have the you know the issues that we us using pastel mat have um, but then you don't have the ability to to get as many layers in and you don't have the ability to get light over dark um, which we're not really using uh, today so that's that's not so bad right so um, I'm going to get the ash grey again which is that sort of pale grey I'm just going to bring a little bit more um, detail onto the top of her eye here up and around let's get those little highlighty bits in up on the top there where it's a little bit lighter it's going in very gently over the top of that grey so that the grey is still there but we're sort of blending into it and then I just want to bring a little bit more so a lot of the time with colour pencil what happens is you'll put your details in or what you think your details are and then you'll go in over the top with another colour and it all disappears you know so you've spent like an hour or whatever um, oh, Alison yours looks like a Labrador well I think that's fabulous I, I love a, I love a Labrador <laughs> um, yeah so we spend an awful lot of time kind of putting details in and then kind of obliterating it all with the layers that we put on and I've, I've heard some people say well what's the point <laughs> you know you spent so long putting all of that in and now it's just all disappeared that's the joy of colored pencil um okay so i'm just again i've got the ash gray here i'm just kind of going backwards and forwards on the little face okay so that's all looking quite nice i'm going to come back in with the dark sepia and i'm just going to bring a little bit more just want to make more of this eye so very gently coming down like feather light touch coming down onto the eye area here so it's just that little bit darker in there just bring that eyelid around i just want to create it so we can see where there's dips and bits poking out that's just going to go up there and then we've got this big shadow coming in down here as well so this is the dark sepia that i'm using that's a bit better 
Oh, that's okay. Little lambs come in all sorts of different colours, so you know the um, the sienna pastel mat is fine, and you will get the kind of the colour coming through. But that's you know that's absolutely fine. Um, right. Um, okay. So let's bring the cold grey three in. So this is if you look at the warm grey three, uh, warm grey four, and the cold grey three, the cold grey looks bluer. Um, so that's the cooler colour and I want to bring a little bit of that in onto the ears up here, uh, particularly on this one. So I'm going to bring a little bit of this sort of bluey grey in, um, particularly on the edges here. Now the other thing that you could do is you could use sort of like a sky blue or something like that in here and actually bring in an, um, a definite blue if you wanted, which looks really, really, really nice. Um, just add some sort of like little extra rainbowy type colours. So I'm just bringing that in, in there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this coolness onto the top of the head here as well. Again, wherever you're sort of seeing colours and you're thinking, oh, I can see a bit of blue there, I can see a bit of pink. Um, it's really nice to add the colours, I have to say. And they don't have to be really vibrant and sticking out. Um, you know, you can you can kind of mute them down a little bit, but it sh it just gives it... A little bit extra interest you know having all of those gorgeous colors in there so I'm just gonna add a little bit of this blue in the edge of the ear here and we're coming around a um, little bit of blue on the edges I'm actually I think I'm gonna bring the um, the cold gray one in there which will give it a sort of like a, almost like a whiter feel Let's bring a bit of that through there as well. I always mix my warm and um, cool greys. I think it gives a really lovely, lovely, um, oh, oh no, permanently tired pigeon. Um, do do hang around and watch though. You can turn it when it when you watch it back. You can um, you can play it back. But these these drawers, if we if I did it really really slowly, sadly we'd be here all day. And um, you know these just just it's about letting go and just giving it you know just going for it um so that's looking quite nice um so i'm going to bring the cold gray one in which is very again it's like a bluey white i was using the cold gray three um which was the the sort of the bluey gray that's the one that i was using then um and now i'm going to use the cold gray one and I'm just going to bring a little bit of lighter into the ear here. So I'm just going to kind of come through and just bring a little bit of that through here. Around there. And a little bit more. Just going to bring a bit more of that lighter colour in. And then what we can do is we can start to then go through and look at the rest of the body. I'm going to bring a little bit of light through with the with the cold grey one because it's a very, very light colour. I'm just going to bring a little bit of sort of woolly lightness through into the top of the head. So we've got the dark in there, we've got the light in there, we've got some nice layers in there. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring a little bit of a lighter light on the edge of this ear here. So we've got quite a strong edge. Um, through there. I'm going to leave that. I don't know what it is that she's got on the ear there. I think it's probably a little tag or something. I'll just leave that off. Okay, so we've got that in there. And then I'm just going to bring a little bit of light into the, the edge of her um, head here. Again, just where the light's hitting. Coming through there, just to give her a bit more of, um, and then I'm gonna just lighten up in here. I always find it much easier once I've got a few layers in to then be able to go in and put a few details in. Not that we're putting masses of details in here, but um, uh, you know, it's much much easier once you've got a few layers in to then be able to go in and, and actually build the you know the details and everything. So I'm just putting the woolly bits in here. A bit of woolly in there. Okay, that's all good. 
and I'm just going to bring a little bit more into here as well. The other thing that I do on a regular basis is sit back and have a look. I like to sort of work on pieces, you know, as a whole, even when I'm working in sections. Um, it's, I get very confused work. Well, I can't, I can't really work with grids and stuff like that. I just get confused, you know, working in tiny little sort of squares um, because I, I tend to not really copy um, the photo. Obviously, I copy the photo, but, you know, I tend to sort of bring my own um, um, sort of interpretation in. Okay, so that's looking all good. Let's just lighten up down here a little bit as well and just bring a little bit of the cold grey one in on the side here so we've got some definite um, lights and darks going in in here as well so we're just sort of smoothing everything out coming in over the top of the uh, the cream that we put in through here so I'm just going round and round and round over the top of the creamy elements which is going to sort of smooth the colour into the pastel mat um, you know and get rid of a little bit of that grain in there okay um, yeah it really does it really does Melissa um, right so let's bring a little touch of colour in um, I'm going to go with the granite rose which is like a quite a pinky pink and I'm just going to bring a little bit of this in on the ear so very 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 light pressure this is called glazing so we're just going to glaze in the color over the top of um, it's not we don't want like a big blob of color we just it's that sort of indiscernible color when you put it in it's like it, it makes a big difference but um, you can't really tell you know exactly what color has been put in uh, yes, and the, the recordings, um, it's going to come out tomorrow. Um, you'll all be sent the, the link in the in an email, so don't don't worry if you can't can't catch up. Um, just bring a little bit of that pink in there as well, and I'm going to bring a touch of the pink over into this ear too. This is where I, I, I talk about, you know, the more you look, the more you see. And for me, when I'm drawing, I'm like, oh, I can see a bit of this in there, and oh, I can see a bit of pink in there. Just bringing in little 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 blobs of colour just really help to bring like a bit of interest. Um, you know, it really really help, helps to bring the piece to life. You might be thinking, well, pink on a lamb. You know, don't think so. Um, it doesn't have to be pink. It can be a little bit of you know violet or blue or whatever. You know, um, works really really nicely. I'm going to bring a little bit of this pink in, uh, kind of underneath her neck here. And sort of onto I'm going to bring some more grey colours in on there as well but um, I quite like that I think that's working quite nicely just put him in there and a little bit on the front of her nose there as well in with the grey so it's not it doesn't look pink at all um, you know but it just gives it a little bit of a lift um, right so let's bring in some um, I've got a warm grey, uh, warm grey three, and I'm just going to bring a little bit of that in here. That's going to almost give it a bit of a yellowy feel. We use quite hard pressure, so it sort of just softens it off a little bit. And underneath here as well, if you have got something like a yellow ochre, I don't, didn't, I haven't put it on the list, but if you have got a bit of yellow ochre, um, you can kind of just glaze a little bit of that in, and it would look like this if you glazed it in. So like we did with the pink, very, very, very gently, you just glaze it in. So it's not like a really strong colour. It's just a little bit of a, um, a shadow. If you haven't got the yellow ochre, it doesn't matter. I didn't put it on the list, but I um, thought I'd, I'd add it in anyway, just uh, so you can kind of see what it looks like. And you've also got a little bit of that reflection from the grax. So, um, oh, Caroline, happy birthday. I hope you're having a lovely day. Um, okay, so... That's, that's all looking great on the little face there. That's all looking really good. We might come back to that um, in a bit. But we're going to go back to the bottom area here and we're going to start to build uh, some of the, the wool on the back. 
So what I'm going to do is I am actually just going to just pull that over, oops, pull that over his little face just so I don't um, end up rubbing his face off or her face off. I'm going to use the the warm grey one and I'm just going to start to come in over the bottom. So we've been going an hour, we've got another hour to go. So I'm just going to come over the bottom here again sort of quite quickly but I want to kind of get a little bit more of a, a denser colour coming in. So it's the warm grey, woolly pencil strokes. I'm going to come down the tail, all the way down. You know, it's got a very woolly texture. So, with, you know, the, the texture of the pastel mat and whatever paper you're using. I was amazed when I was drawing, drawing the dog paw yesterday on the Fabriano, how fantastic the grain of the Fabriano, which is classed as a smooth paper, how fantastic that was for the dog pad, um, the dog pads on the paw, paw pads on the paw. Um, really, really, really great texture. So incorporate, you know, use your paper to help you. Um, you know, always work with your paper. Don't don't sort of battle with it. Um, oh yes, those yeah, I those are they're really lovely colours and they're fantastic for smoothing as well, Carla. You know, really really um, super super pencils for helping to smooth everything out. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of pink in here as well. So I'm going to come back down onto the little tail. I want to bring in a little bit of the cold grey three um, and I'm just going to bring a, a touch of that sort of grey colour in. We don't have to have it exactly the same as the um, photograph but you know it's it's quite nice to um, you know particularly when it comes to lighting and stuff like that have have the you know, bring the lighting and everything in from the photo. Let's just bring his little bottom cheek in there, or her little bottom cheek in. So that's the other thing. You don't, you know, you don't want to have big hard lines around everything either. You want that nice softness. So I'm just going to come down, sort of the haunches there. Let's get a little bit more solid colour in there. So this is where, you know, you don't need to be being sort of careful or anything. Just whack that colour in. Let's get it whacked in. And these little, um, the, the wool details on the, the back of the leg here, we can get those in by bringing a darker pencil in and just working into the shadows a little bit. And we can use sort of pinks in there as well, which I think would be really nice. Let's just get these woolly bits down onto the leg here. Again, the, the the wool sort of changes slightly as it gets onto the leg. So we get this very um, woolly wool on the body and the tops of the legs. And then when it gets to the... Oops, I've got a bit of a hair there. A real life hair on our drawing. Um, um, yeah. And then um, we come kind of down... Going to sharpen this so I can get some a little bit more detail in. Okay, so I'm just going to come into here and just get a little bit more. You can see we've got some little fuzzy bits going in over the top there. A little bit easier when you've got a sharper pencil, but again, with a piece like this, if you continually sharpen your pencil, which you're very welcome to do, um, you'll end up with a very small pencil. <laughs> so, um, my pressure at the moment is sort of like I'd say it's a medium pressure so I can get a little bit more of the, um, the value down. Okay, so we've got coming down. We've got that little tail and then we've got these very woolly little hocks here, um, particularly woolly. <laughs> and again, we're gonna come back in again with some of the um, darker colors just to add the those little details and everything. So it's all sort of quite straight hocks in there. And we've got these little woolly hocks in here as well. 
go through a little bit more texture in this back leg here. And then we've got these these areas here, which we put in before, which we can just kind of come back in again and just give them a bit more or something. Don't need to be thinking about details or anything just yet until we've got some nice layers in there. Much, much easier to get details in over the top of a good base layer because you've got all of the colour and the values and everything in there. Oh, oh Carly, you're getting, the, you're getting the soft edges on all of your drawings. <laughs> yeah, you're becoming obsessed with it. I know, it, it, makes, it makes a really, really lovely drawing, getting all of those lovely soft sort of lost edges and everything in there. It's, um, yeah, it's one of the reasons why I love doing white animals on white, um, you know, because you can just let it drift off then into the paper. It's, it's lovely. It's the same as doing sort of like a dark animal on very dark paper. You can kind of just drift it off. Luckily, the grass is hiding his little feet, so we don't have to draw them. That's always a bonus. So just getting all of those layers in, in here as well. Let's just get this sort of fluffy little back of the leg here in. Put a little bit of that warm grey in there as well, just lighten off that shadow slightly to bring some blue into there actually too um the color i'm using at the minute is warm gray one and all i'm doing is i'm just i'm just sort of um just trying to get the color um a little bit um richer we're not going to end up with the getting rid of all of the grain and everything like that but um you know i just want to be able to kind of get it so it's we've got quite a um a good solid base down here so warm grey one just round and round as we come onto the body of the lamb. This area here we're going to bring, you can see there's a little bit, well, I think it's all dirt isn't it really, but uh, we'll bring a little bit of the cold grey in here um, and just kind of come over the leg here. And up into that sort of um, stifle area there. So being quite sort of rough and ready and messy um, but then you know it's got quite a rough coat so we don't have to be you know and again here we can sort of bring in little sort of um, textury bits to sort of show those ridges little ridges of, of fur So it's sort of relatively hard pressure just coming down so we get that texture in there. Um, okay, so I'm going to switch over to the cold grey three. We're just going to bring a little bit more into this area here. It's where the leg, back leg joins on. And I'm just going to bring Again, just woolly pencil strokes in there. Come into there. Yeah, no, it's a lamb. <laughs> I think, to be honest, I think um, calves and lambs do, they do have quite a similar, you know, they've got sort of like, like that lovely sort of little shaped head, don't they? You know. I'm just I'm just happy you think it's an animal. If you'd have, if you'd have thought it looked like an emu, we'd be in we'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? <laughs> At least you thought it was uh, it was an animal. Uh, and then I'm just going to bring a little bit of this cold grey three just up onto the bottom area here as well, just so we get you know some some variation of colour um, in there, which is great. And then I'm going to come down onto the little leg here. And again, I'm sticking with the warm grey, uh, the cold grey three. And I'm just going to kind of come down here. We've got these little um, little ridges in the in the hair here as we come down the leg. And like 
they don't have to be absolutely spot on and perfect. Coming down. And then we can start to, uh, again, using this sort of slightly darker colour to sort of smooth out. Coming down onto that tail there. And then I'm going to come down the front of the leg here. It's coming in there. Oh gosh, Ash Grey for $35. Oh no, I don't know where that is. That's a crazy price. Pablo's are, they're not an expensive pencil. Um... I don't know where I don't know where you've been been where that's um sort of advertised, but that's a that's a yeah, no, you can keep it for that. <laughs> Use something different. That's a ridiculous price. Okay, and then I'm just gonna bring some of the cold grey three in over the top here. So we've got a little bit of that blue coming on in there as well, that bluey grey. Right, I'm going to come back over here and let's bring a little bit more of the um, the warm grey one and I'm going to, from Amazon, oh that's why then I think, yeah they can charge what they like on Amazon can't they, that's a mad price. So warm grey one and we're just going to come back in here. We don't mind it being a little bit woolly on the top there. Yeah, £2.15 sounds about right. It's a good pencil, but it's not that good. <laughs> it's not worth that. Okay. Let's just bring this down here. Still want those little grey bits in there. Looks like it's been rained on at some point, I think. And again, we can kind of bring these little sort of ridges in as well. A little bit lighter in there and then just lighter pressure as we bring bring this down into underneath the tummy here because we don't want to end up with it we want the texture but we want it to stay sort of quite dark down there um, it's going to come over the darker area here with the with the warm gray one you know we don't want to just obliterate all of the values that we've got in there so we're probably going to have to come back in again but we want a little bit of that texture in there um right okay and then so we've got slightly lighter on that elbowy bit there and down I use my um, putty eraser just to sort of lift. Okay. And so I'm just going to quickly get all of this whacked in, get all of this, the, um, it's a little bit more denser and more saturated with colour. And we're going to come back and just add a little bit more texture into areas. Okay, I don't want to smudge that little face. This shoulder here has got quite a lot of texture in it. So the, that round, those round pencil strokes are going to be really, really useful. If you don't have the ash grey, you can use the, the warm grey one that I'm using now. It's a very good substitute. It's just the it's the feel rather than the colour that I like with the um, Pablo's. So coming down this um, this little shoulder here, we can get this bright bit in here, and then I'm going to get some of that cold grey in there as well. So getting all of that nice texture in. Don't be don't be precious. Just get it whacked in. Let's 
coming down through here. And then down the, um, the, the edge of the neck here, again, it's sort of quite light down here. So just sort of run your pencil down and a little bit jimpy. So you've got, you've got the texture kind of sitting in over the top of the edge. Yeah, no, don't worry about if you haven't got the, you know, the specific pencils, just use something that's similar. And the, the ash grey, you'd be looking at the, the warm grey one or the warm grey two are good substitutes for that. Again, sort of quite light down this area here behind that ear. Okay. Oh well, that would be nice, Jane. To um, you can all you can all share them on social media. We can have a hashtag. You can call it hashtag hashtag Bonnie's live lamb. No, maybe not Bonnie's live lamb. <laughs> Bonnie's Bonnie's lamb live draw or something like that. We can have um, be quite nice. So let's just get these little knees in here. And again, down here, we kind of lost this little leg. Get that light area in there. There's like a little bit of light in there as well. Okay, right, brilliant. So we've got lots and lots of lovely texture in there. So now what I want to do is just again, just start to darken everything up. I'm going to use the warm grey four. I'm going to use the, I think I'm going to bring the cinnamon in, I think. Um, might be, actually, I've got the what colours have I got here? I've got a little bit of brown in there as well. I'm sure, I'm going to use the brown. Right, I'm going to use the these two. I'm going to start to add a little bit more um, texture into here. So if we come into the side here, I've got my warm grey four, and I'm just going to bring a little bit of um, texture into the little tail here. So just bringing it down the edge and kind of running it in over the over the top of it and then I'm going to use the cinnamon which is like a pinky colour I'm just going to very very gently just glaze in over the top which will have the effect of smoothing but you'll also get a little bit of a pinky glow coming in through there as well which is quite nice Bring a little bit of a pinky glow in there too so it doesn't come out as like a pink but you, you know you've you've got a little bit <coughs> a little bit of a glow in there oh well, there's a bit of water i think um and then i'm just going to use the the sharpness up i've got the cold gray one here and i'm just as i come down the edge of the bottom here i'm just going to bring in a little bit of that Sort of fluffy detail in on the the bottom there. So harder pressure again. And then I'm going to use the warm grey four, and we're just going to start to bring a little bit of the texture in. So I'm going to go up against the the fur, and we're just going to bring in some little sort of textury mark so I'm, it's almost like I'm sort of putting my pencil on the paper and just kind of pushing it up it's like a, I'm just dotting it just to create a little bit more of this texture in the wool make it random you don't want everything to look the same we're just wanting a little bit of texture in there and kind of hear me as I'm sort of dotting it on and then let's just bring a little bit more onto that little stifle area there. So you, you'll need to use harder pressure. You don't want them to look like lines, you want them to look like sort of little sort of blobs. 
let's get a little bit of um, black in here so just a tiny little bit of black in there we don't want to put loads and loads of black in but you know where where we need the the really nice dark elements in there let's get a little bit of black in there um, and then we've got again it's a warm gray coming down here I want to I want to kind of get some of the uh, the texture down on these little legs down here because it's quite important that we I might have to go with the oh no I think that's going to be okay <clears throat> that warm gray four I think is going to be okay can you see how we've got this sort of gentle little ridges here we'll bring a little bit more onto the edge there and then got a little gentle ridge in there gentle ridge in there and I'm just going to bring that value down there a little bit more and then I'm going to use my <clears throat> cog gray one and we're just going to bring a little bit of So you can see what we've done the sort of the underneath bits and now we can bring in this little bit of um, detail on the top and this will work for all, all sorts of papers you know you don't you've obviously got to be careful about light and dark and everything but um, <clears throat> you know getting your um, getting your values in first is a really really good way of creating a, a piece with an, a huge amount of depth. Okay, I'm just going to come down the edge there. A little bit woolly again. This is the cold grey one. Let's bring a little bit of fluff out on the edge of that tail. And then I want to bring just a little bit of a light in along the edge of this dark bit here. So we've got a cold grey one working quite nicely in there. And then we're just going to bring a little bit of texture in on the bottom of this leg. So I think about the little fur lines that we've got on there. in um, okay let's bring a little bit more texture into this leg here as well okay so we've got 40 minutes which I think is plenty of time um, good okay so I'm going to come in with the cinnamon again and I'm just going to bring a little bit of glazing of the cinnamon in just so we get a, again it's just about getting a little bit of difference in the colour without making it look like that lamb's got a pink leg you know just just bringing a little bit of something in and if you think about the cinnamon mixing with the um, the, the cold greys as well you're going to get a little bit you're not going to get a purple um, but you're going to get a little bit of that sort of a violety hue in there, um, you know, just because of those two colours sort of uh, mixing a little bit. But it's it's just quite nice to kind of have a, just a little bit of colour in there. And also it will smooth everything out. So I'm just kind of glazing in on the, um, on the little hind leg here a little bit. Bring in a bit of colour in there. We'll bring a little bit of colour into here as well. And you can see you don't have to go crazy with, you know, detail and all of that type of stuff to kind of get something that looks, you know, quite nice. Um, right, let's come over. I'm going to use my warm grey four. I'm just going to bring some little textury bits in here. So just literally just zigzagging your pencil down. Bring a little bit into here as well. A 
just just getting a, that little bit of texture in there doesn't have to be everywhere but just you know in the odd place it's quite nice yeah yes you did they do <laughs> you think you're going to be feeling a cloud don't you and it's more like a like a scrubbing brush <laughs> um yeah it's the same with wild animals, you know, like um, sort of lions and tigers. You think, oh, they're just going to feel so soft, and they don't. They feel like all oily and and rough. <laughs> it's um, it's yes, it's uh, it's funny, isn't it? How what we think is the feeling of something isn't isn't actually <laughs> right. I'm going to come back in again with the cinnamon. We're going to bring some cinnamon in in here. And I'm also going to bring some cinnamon in onto the top of the fur up here. So really nice and lightly. There's actually, on the on the photograph, there's a really lovely sort of quite bright blue edge. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll bring a little bit of the, um, the cold grey one in there. So... Again, just down here, just bringing a little bit of... The cinnamon's actually working really, really nicely. I don't think she looks pink, but it, it's quite nice how we've kind of got the light coming in on there. Um, which I think is quite nice. And we're starting to kind of capture some of that nice um, texture in there as well. So let's just... Again, just bring a little bit through into here. So you're talking super, super light pressure here, just glazing that colour in. Um, you know, you don't want big blotches of pink. Although she probably look quite nice, actually, big blotches of pink. But, um, you know, it, it, you want to kind of keep it nice and soft and gentle. Kind of coming down that neck area there. She's looking a li little bit leopardy in here. <laughs> We might just need to address this bit. She looks a little bit like she's got leopard leopard print leopard print wool. Um, <laughs> so I've got the warm grey four here. I'm just going to come in and just darken off this shoulder very slightly and just get rid of a little bit of this uh, um, texture in here. So I'm just going in there. looking good and then I'm going to come back in with that cold grey three where have I put it oops bear with me um cold grey three I'm going to come into the shoulder area here so we actually get the feeling of that sort of shoulder coming in so I'm just going to come in this bit here is a little bit lighter and we've got this definite sort of shoulder blade coming down and then we've got the, the cold cooler grey kind of coming through onto the neck area there as well and then down so it's kind of looking at the form of the animal looking at the structure of the animal underneath and really sort of um, concentrating on where those values just pick up and change slightly uh, because if you can if you can get the, the the darks and the shades and all of that type of stuff in, then it's it's much more likely that you'll end up with something that looks, you know, um, realistic, because it'll look sort of three D. Just kind of coming in here again. We're going to darken these areas off. You see how the kind of sort of sitting proud off the pastel mat there, it, the the pigment just sort of sits on the top. Um, oh, Shirley, honestly. You, you wouldn't believe when I do my videos, um, when I remember, I um, if I'm looking for a pencil, I could be looking for literally like 10 minutes. And I'm thinking, where is it? And it's usually or it's never it's I don't I don't put my pencils behind my ear, but that's the kind of thing. It's usually either right in front of me or in my hand, you know, and I'm like, where is that pencil? <laughs> it's, um, they just seem to disappear, don't you? Don't they? They just seem to. I think there's definitely a pencil fairy hiding somewhere. Right, let's get a little bit of black in here. Not too much because we don't want to, um, you know, we don't want to make... When you put something in really stark contrast, a lot of the times it can really draw attention. So we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, kind of create something that people are going, oh, what's that? 
you know if you want if you want to hide something then you're better off making it a little bit blurry and and um you know not in high contrast but I'm, i just want to um just bring a little bit of that down into the into here slightly just bring in, and it looks quite hard at the minute as in the color looks quite hard um but i'm going to soften it slightly and then i'm just going to bring a little bit of the I find black really, really useful, a really useful colour. And I, I have to admit, I use it a lot. I use it for just darkening things very slightly. So I'm glazing it in here, just using it to darken the, the back of the head here. Just bring a little bit of texture in. Um, I, I'd say, you know, black is one of my the main colours that I use. Look how nicely that looks just, just by, you know, bashing a bit of black in. And again here... What it'll do is it'll soften the white underneath and it comes in as more of a grey you know as long as we don't press too hard um, but that looks quite nice there and i'm just going to darken this little area in here as well it also means we can use light pressure on areas where we want a slightly darker shadow um, and um, and it works really really nice and we don't have to press too hard okay so i'm just going to come down and just give this little cheek a bit of form in here as well. So using using black can be a really, really useful, useful colour. Um, right, I'm just going to bring a little bit more down into here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some of the cinnamon in over the top of the black. shadow on the bottom of this jawline here as well okay and then I'm going to bring the cinnamon in yeah it can it, it's funny when it when you look at it it changes color all of the time so I'm looking at mine I'm thinking it's definitely pink and it's got loads of violets in it it's a it's a tricky one um I I'm I really find it hard what we're doing cinnamon I really find it hard picking colors you know, if I'm doing something, because I never practice, <laughs> you might have guessed, I never practice these pieces beforehand. So I don't draw this to begin with and go, right, these are the colours we're going to use. I never know how it's going to turn out ever. <laughs> it's just, I just wing it and hope for the best. Um, but um, what, what I tend to do is I look at something, I'll go, right, I want a limited palette, particularly for something like this. So what colours do I think would, would work? inevitably what happens is when we start drawing it you start seeing all sorts of different colors like in this little face here there's like a lot of violet in here a lot of violet which obviously i didn't i didn't pick um you know and I, that's why i'm i mean i love doing my workshops and everything like that but um i'm, I'm a i'm a terror for you know starting a piece and then going oh i've chosen these colors i, I don't like these colors anymore i want to <laughs> i want to i want to choose something else um you know which is quite that's how I'll, I work with my tutorials and very often I'll start with some colours <laughs> and then I'll end up with completely different colours by the end of it. You know, we've got half of it done in one set of colours and the other half done in another. Um, half the time because I've forgotten what I'd used. So, but, um, right. Uh, oh, a standard poodle. Oh, just, I love poodles. My, my, two, um, my two girls are half poodle. I, do you know, I think they're the most fantastic dogs. I really, really do. They're so, so, so clever. Um, right, let's put a little bit more dark into here. So we've got um, sort of about half an hour to go. I want to bring a little bit of the black in here. Not as black, but just to, just to darken. So nice and gently. I'm going to bring a little bit over here as well, just to make it grey. Colour's so subjective as well, you know, we all see colours so differently. I'm bringing in these little sort of um, weird little lines in here just to sort of get the texture of the, the, of the wool underneath his tummy or her tummy. And then I'm just going to dark enough down here as well. Just, you know, nice soft pencil marks. Um... Oh, what a what a party poodles, Terry! They sound like something that wearing sort of like hats and having a good time. <laughs> um, right, cold grey one, sharpen it. 
okay and I'm gonna come down the um, down the neck here relatively relatively hard we don't want it like a massive line um, but I want sort of like a bit of a you know a, a light coming down the edge there and then I'm just going to lighten up this bit here as well coming down the ear just lighten up some of these areas where the lights kind of falling on it through there and then I'm just kind of very gently coming in over the top of that black so we've still got a little bit in there but we just sort of knocked it back a little bit um, yeah it's, it's difficult isn't it when you're following something like this because all of our screens look different as well um, I'd maybe bring in in fact I might do but just bring in a little bit of the um, a bit of brown in there uh, so we've got the um, walnut brown I'm just going to bring a little bit of the walnut brown in just to give it um, some some difference into here as well. Um, again, just bring a little bit of the values in. Just kind of creep up there a little bit. I don't want to make it completely different to the rest of it, but I just want to bring just a touch of... something in there oops this is the walnut brown that I'm using here I'll bring a little bit of that into there as well and what you'll find as well is that you know the um, the color is is far less important than your values and everything we could oh, I've got a little fly buzzing around um, you know we could be using all sorts of colors in here you know vibrant bright colors and um, and it would still look realistic if we've got the the values and everything in there it's um, just incredibly important so I'm just kind of darkening little bits up here using the brown just to give it a little bit more of a warmer feel in places to be honest you could use anything really and then I just want to bring in a little bit more um, texture down onto this little leg here so I'm going to stick with the cold grey and come down the edge of the leg down here I thought that was my son back but I think it's a tractor <laughs> he's got a very um, he's got a very loud car Bring it onto the knee here. We want a little bit of this uh, texture on this little knee. And down on the hair kind of comes this way. And then we'll just get a little bit more hair in there. And then we need to get some grass in. So I'm just going to get a little bit more texture on these legs here. I'm going to bring a little bit of pink in onto the knee, so the cinnamon here, just glaze it in and then we just bring a little bit of that just bring a little bit of that into there as well, on the back of the knee Okay, and then I just want to bring a bit more, so I've got my uh, warm grey 4, I want to bring a bit more of that colour down into here. Just through there. Oh, a party is mostly white with one other colour. Ah, okay. I've got you. <laughs> <laughs> they're not the they're not the uh, 
sunglasses and hats and <laughs> having a good time kind of poodle. Now my girls are part, um, they're part standard poodle, but they're part um, Lancia, Newfoundland. Um, so the, the old one, Slipper, she's black and white. But Nellie's, um, I think, you, I don't know what you call her. She was really, really quite dark chocolate brown when she was born. But she's now faded. So she's got, she's sort of muted. Um, and she can look quite white at times. But with a, but her head stayed the same colour. So she's got a really dark head and her body's much, much lighter. Okay, so let's just come down here and just darken these up. This is the warm grey uh, four. A little bit more colour in there and then I'm going to come back in with the pink again so the cinnamon just in here and then we're going to add some more grass go into here and then before I do that I want to um, I'm just going to get a little bit of a cotton bud um, if I can find one that'll do and I'm just going to just gently it's not it's I'm, I don't, I'm not going to blend everything but um, just gently soften You can use sort of like a um, you know a cotton um, handkerchief or something like that. You know a bit of, but I find the cotton buds are really really good. Um, I like to use um, little paint brushes as well on the pastel mat. I just just soften some of those edges. Right, so I'm now going to bring some more grass in. So we have, I've got two greens. I've got grass green and, um, uh, grass green and the um, permanent green olive. So I'm going to start by bringing a bit of the permanent green olive in. I'm just, again, I'm just going to sort of whisk it up. I'm, I'm not going to try and draw grass because it, uh, I'm just not. So I'm just going to I'm just going to kind of draw these little sort of whiskey wispy bits. Um I did a I did a little um purple pony uh, not so long ago and the grass on there was some of the best grass I've ever drawn. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I can't remember how I did it. Um but it was um it worked really really well. So I'm just going to sort of just gently bring a little bit of this in. Try not to make your grass um, too uniform because it, it'll just look horrible. Um, and just sort of a lot of this is about just 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 believing that it's going to look okay. <laughs> That's my whole philosophy. Whatever you do, it'll look fine. It'll be all right. <laughs> look at it through rose tinted spectacles, and it'll not be absolutely fine. Um, that is my whole philosophy is you know if you're if you're sort of relatively positive about something then it'll all work out fine um and if it doesn't who cares it's a it's a lesson learned isn't it um you know i'll just label it a little calf rather than a little lamb okay so i'm just putting a popping a little bit of that grass in there you can see we've just kind of we've kind of gone a little bit i'll probably just bring a little bit in there as well so I've got a very bright green. Um, I didn't want to just put it under just one foot because it, it can look a little bit strange and I really would quite like to bring a bit of a shadow in there as well. So I'm just going to bring a little bit more in there. Okay, 
So I'm going to bring a little bit of the grass green in, which is much brighter. Don't don't be scared. <laughs> when you put it down, you're like, oh, hang on a second, it's too bright. Um, so we're just going to kind of come in there, just sort of make it look a little bit softer with these um, the lighter coloured green. I, I find with grass having a couple of greens, sort of like a relatively dark one, and then sort of like, this is grass green that I'm using here, just a little bit lighter one. It makes it a little bit better. Um, we could, I mean, I could t kind of take it up a little bit more as well if I wanted to, but I think we'll just sort of stick with. I don't want to be, I don't want to be going too crazy with my grass. And just make sure that the little legs are definitely hidden um, in there. I always, um, you know, the more vibrant colours are, are really super on the, the darker pastel mats. They work really, really nicely. So I'll just bring a little bit more of that through onto the face there. Oh, God. Do you know, my son always does that. He's just arrived home and he just stands in front of the mirror, stare, the window staring at me. I <laughs> look up and I'm like, oh. <laughs> does it all the time, little cheeky things. Um, so back in with that darker green, that um, permanent green olive. Again, we'll just bring a little bit in there. Are you going to go to sleep listening to me? <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I'm going to make, one of these days, I'm going to make like a bloopers video, I think, with all of the stuff that I've edited out of my videos where I'm shouting at the dogs. I've just done a podcast with the most fabulous lady, um, <laughs> she came on Friday and we're there in the kitchen doing this and the dogs, I'd lock the dogs in here or two of the dogs in here and they were barking and everything and then every sort of like 10 minutes I was like, wow, I'm just going to go and shut them up I'm like, will you be quiet? <laughs> I'm just hoping it's all going to be edited out otherwise it's all going to be in the podcast, me shouting at the dogs it's like, I'm going to I'm going to kick them, I'm going to kick their bottoms <laughs> They know, I'm they know I'm only jesting when I shout at them. No, I don't mean it. And Vinny's toe is looking, oh, so, so, so much better. Um, he's had a, a, the sock has been brilliant because it's let his toe breathe, um, but hasn't allowed him to actually lick it, which is really good. I'm just going to go back in with that brighter. Uh, we've got like quarter of an hour. Um, I don't think we've done badly, actually. I don't think we've done bad at all. So I think if you want to, um, if you want to share anywhere, um, if you pop a hashtag on, um, probably what could we call it? Bo Bonnie, it needs to be Bonnie with a Y. Bonnie's live lamb draw. Bonnie's live lamb draw. Let's go with that, and then I can see all of your pictures and I can share them if you if you um, hashtag it and just tag me in it as well. That'd be be quite good. Um, right, let's get a little bit more up there. And um, a bit more down here. <laughs> Leonard from the Secret Life of Pets. Which one was Leonard? Was he the big one? My dogs are just honestly they've they just have the rules just don't apply to them at all. They just completely take advantage at all times. Um, <laughs> they are lovely though. Right, a little bit more up on here. Where to share in the comments? Oh no, sorry, Pamela. What I meant was, if you wanted to share in um, on um, social media or something like that, you're very welcome to, um, you know, Facebook or wherever. Right, I'm just going to come back in again with the black. Ooh, hold on a second. I'm going to come back in with the black. Um, Oh, Deborah, thank you. To be honest, this isn't this isn't quite the norm um, for my tutorials. I'm just coming in with a black and just bringing a bit of a shadow in. It's not quite the the norm. 
Um, I'm not a, I'm not a slow drawer at all. Um, but what is the norm is you get a lot of you get a lot of chat and and I kind of talk about you know diff different bits and pieces and what have you. But this has been a spe this has been a definite speedy one. Um, you know, <laughs> normally it's just a little bit slower. So don't don't you know don't think oh blimey, <laughs> it's gonna they're all gonna be really speedy. Um, but all of my tutorials tend to have me, I don't know, telling stories and chuckling away at stuff that I find hilariously funny that nobody else does. Um, we, oh gosh, we watched, um, what did we watch last night? Um, I can't even remember what film it was now that we watched, but it was so funny. I was literally laughing out loud. Was it adults? Adults, I think we watched. Oh my goodness, so funny. Um... Right, so I'm just going to bring a little bit, just a little bit of black into the um, into the grass down here. So we've we've got a little bit of shadow in there, um, which I think could be fine. I'm just going to take a bit. You probably won't have a paintbrush, but I'm just going to take a bit of a paintbrush and just um, soften that top bit there. Not soften the lamp, just wipe it all off. Um, do do right it's brilliant and then a little bit more we've got 10 minutes i'm just going to bring a little bit more i'm going to bring the black in here again just glazing gently just to bring a little bit more definition in so it's just a glaze rather than a an, an actual color so you can see a little bit of the texture in there Oh, that's a pleasure, Evelyn. Thank you. I must admit, I do enjoy these um, these drawings. They're um, they are they're a lot of fun. Okay, just bring a little bit more. This is just kind of working on the values more than anything. And the black I'm using just to sort of darken what's there, rather than add black. Um. A little bit more into there, a little bit more into that eye. Um, just bringing texture in more than anything, really. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring a little bit into here as well. oh it's my pleasure i do um I, I i i really enjoy these it's like tuesdays you know when i do um art club it's just so much fun it really is so much fun um you know and and especially because we do it on zoom so i get to chat to people as well they can you know you can actually talk which is um which is which is really nice right let's go a little bit more in here and i'm going to just bring a little bit again just glazing just using your pencil just wriggling it around Black's so, so useful for just darkening everything up. And nothing has to be perfect. It can be a little bit sort of sketchy. Um, so a little bit darker on here. Good, 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 good. So that's not been... Uh, not been not been so bad actually and we've got seven minutes to spare let's draw another one quick <laughs> let's draw his friend <laughs> um <laughs> you'll be there no um so um 
yeah i think this is i mean i could keep carrying on just messing around couldn't i but i think this has been really fun if you have got any questions or anything in this last sort of like um you know five or six minutes um you know do um do pop them in the comments and i'll and i'll try and um and and answer them um that's absolutely that's my pleasure annette and heather and and audrey first time with colored pencils um oh brilliant i'm glad you enjoyed it yeah you don't have to have the perfect things you just it's just about getting in there and drawing um oh steph well i'm very pleased that you've you've changed your opinion that's great i love pastel mat i, I honestly love it i really really love it um you know it's um it, it's just the most super 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 surface it really is so oh i'm so glad gina um got lost at the beginning <laughs> um the fastest pencil piece you've ever drawn i know we're the fastest in the west we really are <laughs> um oh no problem valerie it's just been so nice oh jane want to take your classes how do you join you want to learn to draw cats i've got i've got quite a few cats actually um well you can wait until next monday and join my academy which would be amazing if you go to um bonniesnowdenacademy.com or you can join my Patreon which is open all of the time. The Academy is very different. The Academy has my has a, a very structured course. Um, I've got seven modules, 40 hours and then you've got all of the tutorials, I've got all of my live streams, you've got all of the Q&As, you've got the confidence sessions and um, business drop-ins and all of that type of stuff. So it's a, it's a really, really fabulous, fabulous resource and Patreon's just, you know, um the tutorials every month um but um yeah so i'd love it if you came and joined me oh thank you so much everybody it's been super hasn't it it's been really really nice um you're not scared of pastel mat after this no you can't be scared of anything after this <laughs> it's um that's what i mean about you know giving it some welly and just going for it you just don't have chance to do anything you're just like oh my god this is like <laughs> the speed of lightning um just bring a little bit more texture down into these little legs oh it's my pleasure susan thank you oh and thank you the academy is fantastic thank you so much um speedy draw usually a lot slower i know you just gotta you just gotta take the take the bit between your teeth and go for it um so this this i can go faster than this <laughs> i've held myself back um Oh, Vivia, that's not. I like that idea that you've done it without the reference photo. I think that's. Um, I bet it looks absolutely fantastic. So, um, oh, Angel, you're so sweet. Honestly, you're you're such a lovely part of my community. Um, you know, always got something lovely to say. It's it's really really nice that you've been here. Thank you. Um, so no, it's my absolute pleasure. I've. Uh, it, I just love sitting, drawing. You know um chatting to everybody it's it's been really really super and and it will be recorded hopefully all being well <laughs> as long as i press the right buttons and um it'll be winging your way uh tomorrow uh via email i'm just gonna bring a little bit more of the shadow in on the top here i think um oh thank you thank you so much um is today a good idea is today a good idea of the academy i just I don't understand that, Diane. Sorry. Um, oh, thank you, Livia. <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to seeing some of your um, some of your pieces that you share with me. It'll be brilliant. Um, so uh, yeah, fabulous. Oh, I'm so glad, Terry. It has. It's been a really, really super afternoon. Really, really enjoyed it. Thank you all ever so much for coming and joining me. Um, so I think. Um, Judith, do you want to come and draw, draw with me in the same room? Well, I am looking at now, uh, kind of attentively looking at, because I was supposed to, I don't know where you are, Judith, but we are tentatively looking at coming to the States, which is a bit scary, but maybe next year we're sort of, we're sort of thinking possibly. Um, lovely, um, lovely Vicky Evans and I are going to do this thing where we're just going to travel around the UK and just knock on people's doors and come and have a cup of tea with you, um, whether you like it or not. 
<laughs> which I think would be really nice. Um, so, um, you know, thank you all ever so much. Honestly, it's been such a, a lovely, lovely afternoon. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, I will, um, I'll share my little lamb on my social media. And, and then if you put a hashtag, uh, hashtag Bonnie's live lamb draw. <laughs> <laughs> something like that I don't know I'll find you <laughs> um and 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 give me a tag and I can share you as well but um yeah I think I think we can I think we can call that finished um I've really really enjoyed drawing with you this afternoon it's been so much fun and um you know hopefully I will um I'll see some of you very soon and we'll have to do this again which would be fantastic um so um Oh, Daniela, thank you so much. That's really sweet of you. Uh, so I'll I will say goodbye. I'll I'll give you a bit of a wave and then I'll go and um, turn the um, the live off. But uh, thank you all ever so ever so ever so much. It's been just a, an absolute joy drawing with you. So I shall see you all soon. See you later. <laughs>